Robert E. Lee and the Confederate War Department knew they could not win a war sustainable in Virginia. They had to do something dramatic, and in particular, win a victory in South, South Central Pennsylvania that might possibly force Abraham Lincoln to come to the negotiating table. So on June 3rd, 1863, Lee sent his army into Pennsylvania. This was actually his second attempt to come to Pennsylvania. The first attempt was in the fall of 1862, where that culminated in the Battle of Antietam. This time, uh, he had a much more powerful, much larger army, and he thought it was time to try again. South Central Pennsylvania was preparing for the summer harvest. Uh, summer harvest typically was in uh, mid-July. Uh, so many of the farmers were preparing for that. Uh, it was a very agrarian region. Uh, there was some scattered industry throughout the area, but again, still largely this was farm country. Very well cultivated, extremely rich uh, soil. And a lot of the Confederates, when they came to this region, marveled at the size of the barns. That was the single largest thing that impressed the Confederates about South Central Pennsylvania, was the houses were so small and the barns were so large. Quite the opposite in much of the South where the houses were big and they just had a small barn out back. The bridge of Wrightsville was at the time the largest covered bridge in the world. Uh, it was 40 feet wide. It had uh, railroad tracks going through it, had the highway, of course, uh, the turnpike, if you will, that led from Philadelphia to Pittsburgh. On the south side of the bridge was a uh, addition that was for the, the canal to use, uh, and mule teams would ride, uh, would go across the canal, and they would have leather straps attached to the canal boats and they would drag them from Wrightsville to Columbia and back and forth. So this was a very important structure, not only uh, from the size of it, uh, but also for the economic well-being of the region. The Confederates that came into this region were mostly uh, from Georgia, uh, Virginia, North Carolina, uh, places like that. Uh, General Jubal Early, who commanded the troops that were here in York County, uh, sent uh, 1,800 uh, Georgians and Virginians, uh, Georgia Infantry, Virginia Artillery, and Cavalry to Wrightsville. These were battle-tested men. Most of them had been involved in the war since the very beginning. They'd fought numerous battles under Robert E. Lee. They'd been victorious in almost every battle. Most of the defenders of the Wrightsville were either discharged veterans from the Union Army whose terms of enlistment had expired, so they had some combat experience. But most of the defenders were militiamen, uh, coal miners, a lot of them were from the Wilkes-Barre School Coal County area, Tamaqua, well, the, that particular part of Pennsylvania. And a lot of them just simply didn't have a lot of experience. Uh, they were joined by 57 free African-Americans uh, who worked at the uh, rolling mill in Columbia. Uh, these guys were given guns, uh, so they had civilians uh, fighting as well, black civilians uh, in their ranks. They also had discharged patients from the U.S. Army Hospital here in York that were at least ambulatory and could fire a gun. So it was kind of a motley group uh, defending the river. Um, most of the guys had never fought together. They didn't know each other. They had some command issues and structures with who's in really in charge of this group. June 23rd, Confederate General Richard Yule, under orders from Robert E. Lee, sent a message to his subordinates that they were to quote unquote, capture Harrisburg if it comes within your means. That's all we really know about Lee's intentions is the fact that if it comes within your means, it doesn't necessarily sound like he really wanted to attack Harrisburg, but if you read between the lines, he did. Uh, capturing Harrisburg would have been a political goal. Um, and there were two, bridge, uh, two bridges, key set concentrations of bridges. One was a uh, twin set of bridges in Harrisburg, a railroad bridge and a passenger bridge next to it. And then the only other bridge in South Central Pennsylvania over the Susquehanna was the Wrightsville, the world's longest covered bridge that we talked about earlier. So the Confederates' initial goal was to burn the bridge at Wrightsville and then co congregate the army at either Dillsburg or somewhere on the West Shore. The Confederate general in charge decided that the militia was so bad, or so utterly inefficient in his word, that he could just grab the bridge, march his men into Lancaster County, and he himself would march on Lancaster from its, or uh, Lancaster County on Harrisburg's undefended rear. So it was kind of an impromptu move on his part. As the, the fighting was going on at Wrightsville, the Union defenders fired a few volleys, slowing the Confederates down. Then they started withdrawing as quickly as possible across the bridge into Columbia. Uh, the goal was to destroy part of the bridge. Now, originally they were gonna knock it down with artillery, but they didn't have any shells. They had plenty of cannons, they had two or three of those, but they had no, nothing to fire with. So the next goal was to uh, expl uh, explode part of it with gunpowder, 
they did that, but if this was a very sturdy bridge and all it did was knock a hole in the walls and the ceiling, so the bridge is still intact. So the third resort was to burn the thing, hoping to only burn a small section of it, but the wind shifts and they actually end up burning the entire bridge down. It takes six hours for it to collapse and burn into the uh, Susquehanna River. The Confederates were actually rushing into the bridge as the last of the Union soldiers were going across it while the bridge was on fire. Um, and yeah, they were desperately trying to save the bridge because again, General Early's goal was to cross into Lexter County. So they went to all these different houses throughout Wrightsville and they were looking for dish pans and buckets and pails. They were actually looking for the fire uh, truck, but the fire pumper was over across uh, the uh, river in Columbia. So and the citizens of Wrightsville had no uh, buckets, they, so they said. Then the wind shift and the town catches on fire and everybody's got a bucket. One of uh, General Gordon, who was the commander of the actual troops of Wrightsville itself, he's a subordinate to General Early, commanded the Georgia Brigade. He ordered his men to form a bucket brigade from the Susquehanna inside Tidewater Canal into the Susquehanna River. And they actually passed water uphill. Uh, as you may know, Wrightsville is uphill above the river. And so these uh, guys from Georgia were, were you know, passing water, pails of water, and then people were standing on the roofs uh, and any time a flaming ember came in, they would actually pour the buckets on the water on it to try to save as much of the town as possible. Uh, and so the citizens uh, helped, you know, surprisingly, uh, helped the Confederates in that activity. And then the mayor's daughter invited General Gordon to breakfast the next morning to say thank you for his efforts of trying to save Wrightsville. There's a couple takeaways. One, the 57 African Americans that fought there, again, civilians, not in uniform, uh, you know, hast hastily organized as a home guard company, proved that they could fight. So one of the big takeaways was the Union authorities in Harrisburg and in Washington realized that black people could be very good soldiers and they could fight. So later that summer, they formed the United States Colored Troops, partially in response to the 54th and 55th Massachusetts who were fighting in South Carolina and partially in response to what was happening here in Pennsylvania with the black civilians fighting there. Uh, other consequences were that the Confederates' confidence level was still so high that two days later when they fought at Gettysburg, um, in a lot of ways, they thought it was just gonna be an instant replay, that they would roll over the state militia, they would take the ground easily. Uh, and they found out to their shock and horror that this wasn't the Pennsylvania State Militia. This was now the Army of the Potomac at Gettysburg on July 1st.